gonna push mow another try. I didn't bring any steep starting ether with me. That probably would have helped. It's been sitting all winter. And on this particular mo model, there's no prime bulb. Hi, Chad here with Purple Color Life, and in this video, today's project is to work on this Husqvarna push mower. If you've watched the last several videos when we were at the cemetery, Mackenzie tried to get this started, I tried to get it started, neither one of us could get it going. Then I took it to another place to mow, still couldn't get it going. Brought it home, took it apart, still couldn't get it going, so my next guess was the carburetor. So in this video today, we're going to replace that carburetor with one I ordered. We'll talk a little bit about this mower and then we'll see if we can get it going. We are working in the garage today. It's cold and rainy outside. It's still, we are now at the end of May and it's only 50 degrees outside tonight. So this is an after work project. We've got better lighting here in the garage and it's a little bit warmer and we're out of the rain. This Husqvarna is a model 5521L. We've had this push mower for about five years. Um, it's been a good push mower Last year it started smoking a little bit when Mackenzie had first started up, but a lot of places that we mow, there are banks. So, you know, she's pushing down over a bank and then pulling back up. We sometimes load them in the back of the pickup truck. So loading and unloading them, there's a little bit of tipping. So since it was only smoking when it first started up, I figured that was probably due to the tipping and some of the oil flowing as we moved the mower around. This mower did come with the rear bag, which goes on and off really easily. I've only used this a couple times to catch some grass to put into our compost bin. Other than that, we always let the mower either blow out the side chute, which is here, or compost mulch into the ground. So lately we've been just mulching into the ground. It doesn't do quite as well with the high grass when you're doing that, it kind of clogs up a little bit. But the problem with the chute is that it falls off pretty often, and you know that a lot of our mowing is done at a cemetery where you're going between stones. This makes the mower just a little bit too wide to fit between the stones. So taking this off and allowing the mulch plug cover to be down lets the Husqvarna fit between those stones better when Mackenzie's mowing with it. Step one is to take the air filter cover off and the air filter. And then we're gonna take this housing off, which is a 5 16 inch. When I took it apart before, I used my little quarter inch socket with drives, but I think the nut driver is going to be easier. I do like to use this magnetic pan. I'll put a link down below, an Amazon link to some of these pieces, but I just removed the black screw that was right there. There's another one over here. Then there are two silver screws, bolts here and here. So there's one of the black ones that came out. Again, 5 16 This mower does have an auto choke system and no primer bulb. So it makes it more difficult when you're having a starting issue to get it to start. And when I would spray starting ether into the port, so the carburetor, it would run on that ether but once the ether was out, it would not run any longer. Now we'll take these two other bolts out. As with any of these videos, I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert, but this is Purple Collar Life. We try to do what we can when we can to fix things that break here at the family homestead. I do recommend that you watch the whole video the whole way through first if you're using this as a step-by-step -step guide. These two silver bolts are a seven millimeter. And that lets this come right off of the carburetor. And there's our carburetor. Now, of course, since we were gonna start this up to mow, it was full of gas. So I brought this cup out, and I'm gonna take this hose clamp off and try to drain the gas into the cup. Right here, by the way, is that hose I'm removing the clamp from.
So that's the area we're looking at. We gotta get the carburetor out of there. Gasoline's all drained now. It was more gas than I expected in that little tank. I am using my little rigid light for additional lighting. And I wanna pay attention to where springs and things are attached because on the new carburetor, I'll need to replace those. Now let me talk to you a little bit about this carburetor that I bought. I looked on Amazon and eBay and bought the cheapest carburetor I could find for the Briggs & Stratton model 550EX, which is what this five and a half horsepower, 140cc Briggs & Stratton engine is that is used on the Husqvarna mower. So again, this is a Husqvarna model 5521L with the Briggs & Stratton 550EX engine, five and a half horsepower, 140cc. So this is the carburetor I ordered. I actually ordered this one off of eBay, but I'll put links down below to Amazon affiliates links for this carburetor. This is the cheapest one I could find, and it's the carburetor only. Several kits include a spark plug, a clean air filter, and a couple other parts for maintenance of your mower. Since I'm not sure the carburetor is the issue, I just wanted to buy the carburetor, and I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money. But the cheapest one I could find, $8.99, arrived in about a week. And it came with some loose pieces. So there's another round gasket and a shaped gasket. And here is the carburetor. It's all plastic. It does have a bowl drain at the bottom, an Allen wrench drain. It does have a gasket already in it. It's got this piece that seems to be loose, a little ring here that screws in. And then the automatic choke function. So you can see when that pulls, it's open. When it doesn't, it's closed. So it's a very interesting but very inexpensive plastic design. So this, I wanna make sure I get set up so that when it goes in, it's exactly like the one that came out. And yes, I am working off of the club car, golf cart, as my workstation. So this needs to come out of the top. By the way, this was just slid into that slot over here on the right-hand side. So I just pulled that out. Now I've got to get this little Z thing down, there we go. And the same thing with that one, there we go. There's still a little bit of gasoline, but here's the old carburetor. Looks like functionality is the same. Locks open in that position, and then closes for starting with the automatic choke. Now remember, I only run ethanol-free gasoline in my equipment, so I was hoping that would keep the carburetor from ever gumming up. And like I said, I don't know if the carburetor is the issue. So that was easier than I thought to get out. Should be pretty easy to put this one in. So here is a ring and a little gasket. And my new carburetor has a ring with a little gasket in it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a gasket right there. But they also sent me this other ring, so I'm not sure what that's for, and this other gasket. I'm guessing they're just spares. So we'll just reverse that procedure, put the new one in. That little Z clamp goes there. This. Goes up through here. So there we're back together and slide that on just like that. That was really easy. Next step reconnecting the gas line. So we're good there. Here's where that gas line's connected. 
can see our carburetor is in place. This little vent tube goes right there. It just slides on. Line this up with the screw holes. And the metric ones or the silver ones, seven millimeters. And those are machine screws self-tapping. And the black screws were 5 16 I have a good feeling about this. I hope this is going to work. Next, we'll put the air filter back on. And the air filter cover. Since we've already got this partially torn apart for maintenance since it wasn't running right, and I'm really confident, hopeful, that that carburetor will be the problem solution. We're going to go ahead and change the oil. It's a silly method in my opinion that there is no drain on this, but to change the oil you take the dipstick out and you tilt the whole lawnmower over with the drain or with the oil fill down as the drain, keeping the air filter side always up. So I like to do this on a bank and tip it right into an oil pan. That oil doesn't look bad at all, it looks pretty good. But I do this at least once every year. Sometimes if we do a lot of mowing with the push mower, we'll do it twice. And then when it's done, just tip it back up. Put the dipstick back in, get out of the rain. For my push mower oil changes, I like to use either the Briggs & Stratton SAE 30 oil or a conventional 10W30. My preference is always the Briggs & Stratton if I can find it. Sometimes this can get hard to find. I'll see if I can put a link on the description down below to an Amazon link. I like to use my narrow funnel down in as far as it will go so that the oil hits here and flows down. I think I'll need to do it that, that way. I'm gonna have a rag and wipe off the dipstick set it aside. Now oil capacity in these mowers is difficult to measure. So what I like to do is just fill a little bit and check it, fill a little bit and check it. Pulled the manual up on my phone here. It says change the oil after every 25 hours of use. Talks about draining the oil with a little picture, just how we did it with the mower tipped. Is 18.5 ounces, so not all of a 20 ounce bottle. You definitely do not want to overfill these. So we're gonna take the funnel out, set it aside. Let that settle in for a minute and then we'll check the level. Okay, I had a phone call, so it's actually been well over a minute, but we will stick the dipstick down in here. And that's exactly how you wanna do it. You don't wanna twist it and lock it in place and make it go down further. You do just wanna let it sit there and then pull it out and check the level and you can see we are just below hopefully that comes into focus we are just below the bottom dot so we need to add a little bit so that we are between those two dots Let's see if you can see that so we're just at that bottom dot we want to be in between add a little bit of oil We'll let it settle down and we'll check it back in one minute. Leave the funnel in there to drain out. While we're letting that drain out, this is actually a good time to check the spark plug. So right here is the spark plug location. We're just gonna go ahead and take the boot off. And there you can see our spark plug. We've got our spark plug wrench, five eighths. Go over top of the spark plug. And it shouldn't be super tight. 
So there's our plug. It doesn't look too fouled, but it does ha look like it has wet oil on it. So that's not a great sign. And just wipe it off a little bit here. And this spark plug is a Champion RC12YC. So once again, that's a Champion RC12YC. Our boot back on. And I'll check the oil. Now oil is one of the most important parts of the mower to keep changed. And now we're good. Hopefully you can see that. We are right between the holes. So we're perfect. Fresh oil. We checked the spark plug. New carburetor. Now we'll put some gas in it. Oh, you know what? The other thing we'll do, we'll swivel this around and we'll check the blade while we're here. Taking a look at the blade here. It's in pretty good shape. No bends. There's a chip right there, but it looks like it's in good shape, so we're not gonna mess with it. You'll see how I tip this up so that the air filter side is up. Put some of our ethanol-free gasoline in. Now I'm not sure how long it will take for the gas to get down through that new carburetor and into the ignition. So we'll probably have to pull it a few times here. Well, that seems to have fixed our problem, that new carburetor. Again, with using the ethanol-free gasoline, I don't know how that carburetor got gummed up, but it certainly seems to be the case. So all that's left to do now is clean it up so it looks like new. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up. Hopefully this helped somebody else out who was having the same issue of a non-start with their Husqvarna, pretty much any push mower but this is the 5521L, the Briggs Engine 550EX. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.